make to some comments from those. Psalm 106, uh, we're going to look at just a, a few verses in several different chapters tonight. In uh, Bibles without commentaries, you can open your Bible right to the middle and you'll, you'll open up to the book of Psalms. Uh, when you have all these different commentaries and some of them, it kind of messes up the, the middle of your Bible, but uh, that's all right. Psalm 106, verse 1 says, Praise ye the Lord, O give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Psalm 107, verse 1. I'm going to try and be slow tonight and uh, let you get to these scriptures so that I'm not, not rushing ahead. Psalm 107, O give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. And verse 8 says, Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Go to uh, Psalm 111 and verse 1. Psalm 111. Praise ye the Lord. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. The works of the Lord are great, sought out of all them that have pleasure therein. His work is honorable and glorious, and his righteousness endureth forever. He hath made his wonderful works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. In Psalm 112, verse 1, Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighteth greatly in his commandments. Psalm 113, verse 1. Praise ye the Lord. Praise, O ye servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. From the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. Go on to uh, Psalm 135. Of all the words you'll hear tonight, uh, these will be the most important. <laughs> uh, my words uh, do not compare to what uh, God has to say. Psalm 135, verse 1. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the name of the Lord. Praise him, O ye servants of the Lord. Ye that stand in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of our God. Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Sing praises unto his name, for it is pleasant. And in Psalm 138, verse 1 and 2. I will praise thee with my whole heart. Before the gods will I sing praise unto thee. I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. And then Psalm 145, verse 1. Psalm 145, verse 1. I will extol thee, my God, O King, and I will bless thy name forever and ever. Every day will I bless thee, and I will praise thy name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. Psalm 146, verses 1 and 2 says, Praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. While I live, will I praise the Lord. I will sing praises unto my God while I have any being. Psalm 149, verse 1. Praise ye the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song and his praise in the congregation of saints. And you couldn't hardly talk about praising the Lord and not read Psalm 150. Uh, I had an uncle who used to ask people to turn to Psalm 151, but uh, you know, that's the way bramblets are. But Psalm 150. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise Him in the firmament of His power. Praise Him for His mighty acts. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Praise Him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise Him with the psaltery and harp. Praise Him with the timbrel and dance. Praise Him with stringed instruments and organs. Praise Him upon the loud cymbals. Praise Him upon the high-sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. And uh, we, we've read a, a few praise the Lord's tonight, haven't we? Uh, and uh, it, it's good to stop and think. What does that mean? 
It's more than just saying, praise the Lord. You can see there, there's a lot of things we can say uh, to praise the Lord. Uh, it's to give thanks. Uh, it's to honor Him. It's to appreciate Him. Uh, do you know what I mean when, when I say to laud Him? You know, to, to promote Him, uh, to, so, to celebrate Him, to glorify Him. Uh, kind of a, a definition might be is to talk about His qualities and His actions. Uh, who He is and what He's done. Uh, that's, that's praising the Lord. In, uh, in studying these verses and, and many others, I noticed three things that came up over and over. God's works, God's goodness, and God's mercy. Now, those three things, over and over, uh, they came up. Uh, you, you might have noticed in, in Psalm uh, 106, for instance, he had them all there together. Give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Who can utter the mighty acts of the Lord? His works. It's his goodness, his mercy, his works. Uh, those are particular areas that, uh, that God uh, brings out. Uh, you know, we're told to speak His praise. We're told to sing His praise. Uh, we're told to, uh, there was one of the verses that says we're, we're to praise Him all day long, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, it said in, in Psalm 113. Uh, in Psalm 145, uh, He says we're, we're to praise Him every day. Uh, Psalm 145, verse 2, Every day will I bless Thee. Now, the more you see about this, the more you should think, this must be important. <laughs> this must be something that should be a part of my life as a Christian. Somebody uh, said, uh, you know, I was down in the dump, so I bought a new hat. Hopefully a lady. Somebody said, what were you doing down in the dump? <laughs> you know, we're, su we're supposed to be praising the Lord. That doesn't mean we'll never be down. It doesn't mean we'll never have a sad thought. But, you know, praising the Lord is an important part of our life as a Christian. Uh, we're to praise the Lord. And, and these, thring, th thrings, these three things uh, that we can look at tonight, I, I think will help us as we think about how to praise the Lord. You know, His works, His mighty works. Uh, I'm in Psalm 145, uh, verses 4 and 5. Psalm 145, verse 4 says, One generation shall praise thy works to another, and shall declare thy mighty acts. I will speak of the glorious honor of thy majesty and of thy wondrous works. As I thought about this, I realized, because God is so all-encompassing, there is no end of his works. Uh, there's, there's a few things I'll, I'll point out briefly tonight, but, uh, you know, God, nothing would exist without him. Uh, we can praise Him, for instance, for creation. Uh, take a look at Psalm 148, and starting in verse 1. And he just mentions a few things here. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord from the heavens. Praise Him in the heights. Praise Him, all His angels. Praise ye Him, all His hosts. Praise ye Him, sun and moon. Praise Him, all ye stars of light. Praise Him, ye heaven of heavens, and ye waters that be above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for He commanded, and they were created. Do you ever just look around at, at God's creation? You know, the world says, oh, it just happened by chance. Came from nothing and going nowhere. <laughs> I remember as a young man, I must have been about 18. I was working in the hills of California. And uh, it, it just, I had an opportunity uh, to go off on my own. I was uh, on a river and uh, just walking along on my own. And... It just almost overcame me, the, the beauty and the wonder of God's creation. It was just an amazing time uh, to think about, you know, God made all of this. And, uh, you know, sometimes it's, it's good just to stop and think about all that God has, has done in creation. There, there's so many other things. Uh, we, can, we can praise Him for His work in giving us the Bible. The Bible is an amazing book. You know, written over, uh, what is it they say, uh, 1,500 years, and yet it's one book. Man, uh, if I set aside a sermon for a day, I have trouble taking it back up. <laughs> uh, you know, God put it all together right from the beginning uh, to the end. But we can praise Him. Uh, God not only spoke it, but He had it recorded, and He's preserved it. There's been people who have consciously tried to destroy the Bible, and yet we have God's Word. We have it, uh, we hold God's Word. Uh, in our hand. In uh, Psalm 138, in verse 2, he says, 
I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. God's word is important and he, he's given it to us. Psalm 139, you can, you can praise the Lord for you. Um, been a few babies around lately that different homes that I, I visit and you know, it's just an amazing thing to think that this little critter forms in the mother's womb and comes out all these parts functioning and uh, it's just an amazing thing in Psalm 139 uh, verse 14 he says I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made marvelous are thy works and that my soul knoweth right well you know, occasionally we have a part that doesn't work. So I'm getting older, I'm getting a few more parts that don't work. But uh, listen, basically, we work. It's, it's amazing. You know, just, just, you can just go through all the different areas of your body and, and just, uh, just be amazed at, at how they work. The fact that we can hear, the fact that we can see, you know, that our body can take light waves and, and make sense of it. And I'm pretty sure I'm seeing you, and I'm seeing this, and I'm seeing that. Uh, what a wonderful God. And he goes on in verse 16, Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect, and in thy book all my members were written. You know, God, you're not a, an accident. God planned you. We can praise him for that. We can, uh, when Psalm 100, we, where we read, it is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. No such thing as a self-made man. <laughs> uh, God made us. We can praise him for that. We can praise him for salvation. In uh, Psalm 118, verse 21, there's, there's a lot of verses that have the word salvation in it. Uh, Psalm 118, verse 21 says, I will praise thee for thou hast heard me and art become my salvation. I see two things in there at least. One, God hears us and God, God will save us. He says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. God will hear a sinner's prayer. And we can praise him for that. That's a work only God can do. Only God can get you into his heaven. Aren't you glad that, that he's a wonderful Savior? Uh, we're to praise the Lord for his works. Uh, you, can, you can spend a lifetime looking into this and praising him. But as well, we're to praise the Lord for his goodness. Most people know Psalm 23 where he says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You know, God's goodness. The, the problem I find is that oftentimes goodness is misunderstood. I, I often ask people if they're going to heaven. Now, I've told you this hundreds of times. Uh, and, and the common answer is, yeah, I've been pretty good. <laughs> and we have a false understanding of what good is. There's an interesting verse in Job. You can just listen to this one if you want. Job 34, verse 4 says, Let us choose to us judgment. Let us know among ourselves what is good. That's the way most people look at good. It's whatever they decide. They can be a good thief. They can be a good killer. <laughs> uh, you know, the, good is just whatever they decide. Well, that's not what good is. God is the definition of good. God is good. And if you don't believe God is good, you don't believe in the God of the Bible. Uh, we need to praise him for his goodness. You know, people will talk about the good old boys. And I don't know if we use that expression here in Australia, but basically that's just creepy people that you like. <laughs> uh, you know, that's, that's bad people that you happen to like, the good old boys. Uh, we, we love to overlook our own faults and emphasize the faults of others. Proverbs 20, verse 6 says, Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness, but a faithful man who can find. You know, we have a distorted view oftentimes of, of what is good. And yet, if we have trouble, we sometimes doubt that God is good. Isn't that the, the truth? But, you know, even in our trouble, God is good. Did you know that? Uh, I'm not sure where you are, but look at Psalm 119, verse 71. I mean, I know where you are, but where you are in the Bible. Psalm 119, verse 71 Psalm 119 is all about the Bible. It's the letters of the alphabet, and each section talks about how good God's Word is. And Psalm 119, verse 71, he says this, It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. You know, even in our trouble, God is good. 
And as Christians, we believe that God has a good purpose in, in the things that happen to us. Um, the definition of good is the character of God. Psalm 34 and, and verse 8. Again, you're welcome to turn to these or, or just to listen. But Psalm 30, 34 and verse 8. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. See, the, the definition of good is, is our God. And we see it in who he is and what he does. Uh, good is not you and good is not me. In fact, the, the book of Romans says there is none that doeth good. Uh, we are not the definition of good. Uh, my wife hates it when I do a job and I say, oh, that's good enough. She says, you should say, that's perfect. <laughs> so I've learned to say that. <laughs> and, uh, our God is perfect. He's not just good enough. He's good. His very character, his very person, he's good. Now, I'm not going to spend the, uh, we could spend the rest of eternity about what God is like. God is perfect in who he is. We need to understand that. God is holy. God is just. The Bible says God is love. Yeah, he's not just loving. He is love. If you ever experience love in your life, that's a gift from God. God is good. God is faithful. God is true. You know, even in justice and mercy, you know, two things that seem so opposed to each other, they're brought together and it says justice and mercy kiss each other in Jesus Christ. Our God is perfect. Aren't you glad? Not only in who he is, but what he does. And you know, sometimes we, we have such a distorted view of life. Sometimes we think, oh, you know, why would God do that? Well, someday you'll understand. Someday it, it'll be, be plain. Uh, we, how does the, the verse go? We see through uh, something darkly. Glass, darkly. Glass, darkly. Yeah. Uh, right now, we're not seeing things the way they, they really are. But God knows. Uh, we especially see God's goodness in his grace and his mercy. I love those words, grace and mercy. Grace is when God shows us favor and blessing that we don't deserve. And let me say, there's no favor or blessing that we do deserve. Uh, God blesses us because God is good. There's a verse in James, it's James 1.17, where he says, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. And what that says to us is, God is always good. God never has a bad day. Aren't you glad? <laughs> he never gets up and says, oh, I'm sick of them. No. Uh, God is always good. He, he never varies. And what a blessing. And grace is the fact that we don't deserve it, yet he blesses us. Uh, if you're still in Psalms there, Psalm 68, verse 19, for instance. <laughs> Psalm 68, verse 19. There's some great verses. Some of these, you, you need to write them down, stick them on your walls. Blessed be the Lord who daily loadeth us with benefits, even the God of our salvation. That word sila is not really meant to be read out loud. It's actually a musical note, and it means pause and think about it. Uh, uh, God loads us every day with blessing. And when we finish here today, you need to realize that. I think, I hope you will. That there, there's more that we can thank and praise Him for than we could ever even imagine. Our God blesses us. We sing the song, Count Your Blessing. Listen, you could never count them all. But we need to. We need to be thinking about how much God has blessed us. Uh, and to me, one of the strange things is that God even blesses our feeble efforts. You know, he has a rule. Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. Now, it has a bad side to it. <laughs> uh, you know, if you do bad things, you're, you get, that's what you're going to reap. But if, if you are trying to do right, God says he'll bless you for it. You know, blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he's tried, he'll receive the crown of life. Uh, the, uh, the Sermon on the Mount, blessed are the meek. For, you know, I don't know all the answers to those. But, you know, blessed are the merciful, and, and so on. And he says there's a, there's a blessing if you'll... If you put in some effort for the Lord, he says, he'll bless you for it. There was a man who, it always makes me chuckle when I, when I read the, the book of Nehemiah. He must have been an amazing man. He used to, he did some amazing things. You'll, you'll have to read it yourself. But he, boy, he put in an effort for the Lord. 
And, and here's his prayer to God in Nehemiah, uh, the last chapter. Remember me, O my God, concerning this, and wipe not out my good deeds that I've done for the house of my God and for the offices thereof. He says, Lord, I, I've done the best I could. He was just counting on the goodness of God, wasn't he? Later he said, uh, let's see a, a verse, where am I here? Lost my place. Now that happened often. Chap, uh, verse 22. There it is, I've got it underlined. Remember me, O my God, concerning this also, and spare me according to the greatness of thy mercy. And then at the very end of the book, he says, Remember me, O my God, for good. You know, God doesn't have to bless us. God blesses us because he's good. But he does notice our heart. And in our heart, if, if we're honest and sincere in trying to serve the Lord, he says, he'll bless us. Isn't that good? Uh, God blesses us because he's good. There's some verses in Romans that I, I like to bring to people's attention. Romans 2, uh, this is one of those verses where you need to know where it is. Romans 2, verse 2, says, We are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. We can count on God always being true. And thinkest thou this, O man, that judges them which do such things, and doest the same thing, I'm sorry, the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? Yeah, we love to judge others. We need to understand God's the judge. And then here's the verse I want you to, to hear, verse 4. Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering? not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. See, God is good. God shows blessing to everybody. He makes the sun to rise on the good and the bad. He makes the rain to fall on the good and the bad. God blesses everybody. God gives us life. God gives us, you know, he's given us marriage. We, as a society, we try to mess it up, but, you know, he gives us family. He gives us all these things to, to bless us and to help us. And he says that goodness and forbearance and long-suffering is to bring us to Him. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. I'll give you rest. Let me give you rest. That's, that's our good God. Uh, yeah, we can praise Him because He's good. We can, we can praise Him for His works. We can praise Him for His goodness. We can praise Him for His grace. You know, our undeserved blessing. If you think you deserve it, uh, you've misunderstood. Uh, we need to understand uh, it's grace. And we can also praise God for His mercy. You might have noticed we read many times, you know, praise Him for His mercy. If you want to read about mercy, uh, read Psalm 136. It's in every verse. For His mercy endureth forever. <laughs> it, it's a song where one group would, would chant one thing and, and then the next would chant the other. The, the psalms are, are songs and they, would, they were mainly chanted. Uh, we praise God for His mercy. If you're in Psalms there, Psalm 86 verse 5. And let me say this, mercy is when God withholds the judgment we deserve. Grace is when God gives us the blessings we don't deserve. Mercy, he withholds the judgment we do deserve. Uh, Psalm 86 verse 5 says, For thou, Lord, art good and ready to forgive and plenteous in mercy unto all them that call upon thee. God is plenteous in mercy. Romans 10, 13 says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. God is just saying, anybody, anytime can come to him and, and get his mercy. It, it, it was paid for by Christ and it's free to us. In Proverbs 28, he says, He that covereth his sin shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. We can come to God for mercy. We deserve God's judgment, but God shows mercy. Over and over we read that phrase, His mercy endureth forever. His mercy endureth forever. I think, one of, to me, one of the greatest verses about mercy was written by the weeping prophet in Lamentations uh, chapter 3. Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22 and 23. Some of you probably know those verses. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because His compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. What, what a great verse. Man, we're not consumed because his compassions don't fail. 
Uh, listen, without God's mercy, you'd be in hell today. That's right. Without God's mercy, I'd be in hell today. Today. I don't, I don't mean tomorrow or when I die. I mean today. And because of his compassion, uh, he shows us mercy. Uh, there's a new song we've learned that, that says it so well. Our sins, they are many. His mercy is, is more. Aren't you glad? His mercy is more. Uh, we have so much to praise the Lord for. I think you need to remember that our ability to praise the Lord has a foundation in hope. The reason we're able to praise Him is because we have hope. Psalm 71, verse 14. I will hope continually and will yet praise Thee more and more. We're talking about faith. We're able to believe. We're able to have hope because God is faithful. We have a hope, we, we saw this morning, based in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, a life. Uh, this morning, if, if you, or this morning, this, tonight, if you're not able to praise the Lord, uh, you, you need to look to hope. One of my favorite verses is Romans 15, 13. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. He's the God of hope. That's the basis of praising the Lord. Uh, Psalm 43, verse, verse 5, he says, you've felt like this before. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? Why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him who is the health of my countenance and my God. You know, why, why would we spend so much time uh, cast down and disquieted. We have hope in the Lord. That's the basis of, of praise. We have a foundation in hope. And praise has at least two partners. You can't use the term partners in crime. Uh, has at least two partners. The one is thanksgiving. You remember we, we read, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. They're teammates. They work together. Thanksgiving and praise. If you're having trouble praising the Lord, start by thanking Him. You will never run out of things to thank Him for if you have a grateful heart. I mean, start dividing things up. I mean, you can thank Him for this finger and that finger, this finger and that finger. If you're missing one, well, thank Him that you used to have it or, you know, whatever. <laughs> you know, uh, there's just so much you can thank Him for. Uh, we need to be a thankful people. Um, the other partner that praise has is the glory of God. Psalm 148, verse 13. Psalm 148, verse 13. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for His name alone is excellent. His glory is above the earth and heaven. As you get to know the Lord you will understand that he is excellent. It will be no problem for you to glorify him if you know him. And the more you know him, the easier it will be. And uh, the glory of God is, is a partner of praise. There's a verse in Ephesians that says that we should be to the praise of his glory. Do you know what that's saying? We exist for the praise of his glory. That's why we're here to glorify the Lord for the praise of His glory. And that it, the sentence finishes with this, that we should be to the praise of His glory who first trusted in Christ. See, the foundation is trust the Lord. When, you, when you've trusted the Lord, it's no, it shouldn't be a problem praising the Lord. Now, let me ask you tonight, have you trusted the Lord? Have you trusted Christ as your Savior? Are you trusting the Lord? Will you praise Him? Will you praise Him? Uh, did we sing that song tonight? I will praise Him. Praise the Lamb for sinners slain. Uh, I hope you meant it when you sang that. We're going to end with two songs. Actually, I thought we had more songs uh, tonight, but that's okay. Uh, the first one is page 211. Come up and lead us in, in these, Azrael. This is just a chorus. We'll just sing it through once. Uh, let's just praise the Lord. 